Hello everyone. Before we begin, I want to state I generally don't permanently overclock my equipment and I certainly don't ever review hardware overclocked since it gives a false impression of performance. Now this is the Ryzen 3 4350G. Um, it is a prime example of why I don't overclock in general certainly for reviews. Now the Ryzen 7 4750G is said to overclock easily to 4.5 gigahertz and with the iGPU it can overclock to 2.5 gigahertz. This Ryzen 3 however maxes out at 4.3 gigahertz for the CPU and 2250 megahertz for the iGPU. So this shows that not all CPUs are made equal and it has been known that early reviews and reviewers get binned CPUs. Not to mention that it's normally the 4750G that's reviewed which is more likely to have better quality silicon in it anyway. Anyway, let's get on to why you're here and it's not to hear me rambling on about why I overclock and not. I spent about four days tweaking this CPU and GPU to get these results. They are both, well both settings are perfectly stable with the stock cooler and the settings are as follows. The CPU is manually clocked to 4300 megahertz with a voltage of 1.35 volts. The system on a chip or SOC voltage is set to 1.4 volts. And this had to be set in two locations for it to take effect for whatever reason. The iGPU is also manually clocked to 2250 megahertz with the FCSK set to 2000 megahertz. And lastly, the RAM is set to default XMP profile of 1600 megahertz. I was able to overclock it a little bit, but for the sake of stability, I left it at default. I couldn't get the iGPU or CPU any higher than this without um, the system hanging or blue screen or failing to boot altogether. You might get slightly better results with a higher end motherboard and better cooling, but probably not by a lot. Now what I did, I tested, uh, ran a few benchmarks and a few games with the overclocked iGPU. I also then put the iGPU DAP back, back down to stock and I compared this all against an RX 460 from Yeston. It's a good card, not the best, nice and cheap, and you will see from the results that the dedicated card performs best and gives you a nice idea of where this iGPU lands in terms of, in terms of performance. It's important to note I left the CPU overclocked for all these to try and give the clearest picture on the graphical side. So I suppose let's get started. So let's first look at the CPU performance gains. In CPU Z, we see a change from 2612 to 2921 for multi core, and a change from 454 to 516 for single core. In Cinebench, we went from 2349 to 2449, which is now actually faster than 7700K. Now let's look at the iGPU. First, let's compare some 3D mark benchmarks. In the first column, we have the overclocked 4350G. In the middle column, we have the same iGPU at stock. And in the final column, we have the RX 460. In Time Spy, we get 1437 for the overclocked iGPU we get 1242 at stock 
and 1958 for the RX 460. In Fire Strike, it's similar with 3441 for the overclocked iGPU, 3319 at stock, and 5545 for the RX 460. We also see similar results for Night Raid and Wildlife, with the RX 460 performing the best, but with decent games from the overclocked iGPU. Next we have the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. The performance improvement here isn't great. We only see a few frames gained here with the overclock. With the RX 460 getting the largest gains of about 9 to 10 FPS more. So we're not talking about a huge jump in performance, but it's a free performance game nonetheless. It's worth pointing out here that the power consumption for the stock performance is about 60 watts at the overclock performance which is 2250 megahertz we see this jump to 90 watts so that's quite a large jump and with the RX 460 that's with the iGPU turned off it comes in at 140 watts so there is a substantial difference in power consumption between the three setups but you can see the performance gains are there to, well, in some cases, justify it, some not so much. Sticking with um, synthetic ben benchmarks for now, let's look at Final Fantasy XIV. Here we see a bigger jump in frames for the overclock, with about 5 frames gained over stock. The RX 460 still beats both hands down, but the performance is acceptable for. Um, a massively online RPG. Next we have Strange Brigade on the lowest settings at 1080p. Once again it's a similar story. We gain a handful of frames, approximately about 4-5, or five, with the RX 460 hitting the high 60s overall. But once again it certainly improves the experience. So the overclock is worth it. Next, let's look at Far Cry 5 on low at 1080p. Again, we only gain about 4 frames. But importantly, it allows the game to hit that 30fps mark of you know just about playable. Whereas stock, it just doesn't hit it at all. But of course, this is an iGPU sold for 720p gaming which is probably about right since it's just about playable um, at 1080p so at 720 it should be more than playable now for our final synthetic benchmark here is Tomb Raider it's the first one of the rebooted series running on low at 1080p here we gain about the same 5-6 FPS over the stock which brings the game to 48 FPS average, which isn't great, but it's playable. Once again, 720p will make this more playable. Okay, so on to some games. First, we have Road Company, which runs well on this iGPU anyway. But we do see a performance jump on medium settings at 1080p from 73 FPS to 84 fps with the rx 460 coming in as 130 fps so while the gain the gains are modest they are there but they're above 60 fps regardless you could probably bump the game to high at this point with the overclock next in apex legends we get a similar boost from 66 fps to 74 FPS with the RX 460 getting 91 FPS so the overclock performs much better here with the performance gap between the overclocked iGPU and the RX 460 being much closer so it kind of goes to show that you don't always trust benchmarks for real world gains they're great for testing 
but they don't always give the full picture. Next, in Doom Eternal, on its lower settings, the gains are about the typical 5 FPS that we saw in the benchmarks. But both stock and overclocked run at about 30 FPS, with the RX 460 hitting 60 FPS. Now, while those results aren't great, you got to, you need to you need to put it in the context a little bit that Doom Eternal's minimum requirements are much 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 higher than this iGPU and this GPU. So it's pretty impressive that it performs that well. Well, so in conclusion, we get a pretty good performance improvement out of this CPU and GPU with just a simple overclock and an increase in voltage. The downside, of course, is the extra, well, nearly 50% extra power consumption and the extra heat that comes with it. So your fan it will be running at its highest speed more often which isn't which is isn't great it just depends what your tolerance level to fan noise is mine's pretty low so that that would annoy me but it's nice to know the performance is there if you need it this board actually allows you to set up a hotkey for on the fly overclocking but it's only for the cpu so it's a shame this can't be done with the gpu as well maybe it can be done in the future but certainly not at the moment. The Ryzen Master software, for whatever reason, doesn't work with this CPU. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that offers a similar kind of setting. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Let me know in the comments if you know otherwise. But, well, I suppose that's about it, really. We managed to overclock this little I iGPU, and... It performed reasonably well. Of course, it falls short of even old mid-range dedicated GPUs. But that's not a surprise, really. It's never been sold as that. It's a iGPU. It's for good integrated graphics. If you expect any more than that, then you will be... You'll be upset in what you get. I've seen people compare this iGPU with a GTX 1050. I don't know where these comparisons are coming from. The, it's certainly not performance that I'm seeing, and I have not seen online or in other videos anything near that performance. So this is closer to a GT 1030 or a GTX 750 Ti. So that's round about where this is. 1030 will perform better in some cases. This will perform better in others. Same with the 750 Ti. But that's kind of the range you're looking at. So anything above that will perform better. But for the thermal budget of 65 watt, there is absolutely nothing out there that can beat this. I will probably revisit this soon with a more in-depth or more com a wider range of GPU comparisons instead of just the RX 460. So I know lots of people out there have got different cards, different setups. I have a 1050 Ti and a 1050 lying around somewhere. Um, I need to find those out. I have a GT 1030 and a 750 Ti I can compare against. I have also just purchased a 4750G which I would like to put against this iGPU as well because that does come with some extra cores so it will be interesting to see if that performs any better but that's it for now thanks for watching and until next time goodbye